Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to the Preacher's Play. Uh, this is Brother J.D. Uh, I've got, uh, I need to send this out. I've been trying to get this out several different times throughout this day. I've just not been able to do it. Uh, it's just, every time I get started, I just tear it down. And I'm going to try to get through and just give you this uh, vital update, important information in regards to my family, in regards to Hannah. I've got people uh, all over, all over the nation, uh, other countries reaching out, and this is the fastest way that I know, effective way to get it out there. So bear with me as I try to get this information to you, um, and I want to say um, you're at liberty to share this link uh, to anybody anywhere. Whether it, I, I don't have social media, I mean YouTube is it. But if you've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, feel free to share this any way that you can and want to. There's been a lot of people that need to know. They've asked a lot of questions. Some people are just, just through the way the Lord has worked and gotten people involved in praying. Um, some people are just now finding out about Hannah and some uh, are under the impression that she's still sneezing repeatedly. So I'm going to try to as quickly as I can cover as much ground as I can to give you as much detail. Uh, this is a, I just can't send a text to everybody. I'm, I'm kind of winging it on my own right now. Uh, it's just, it's, it's difficult. A lot of things we need to talk about and we need a lot of prayer. Um, so let me just say, first of all, thank you uh, for coming to the YouTube channel. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for all your love and encouragement. It's a blessing. Let me give you several things that we need to kind of give you an update. Hannah is, uh, she's in the hospital right now, and I'm going to go into all these details as much as I can, as much liberty as I have uh, to do so. I want to read a verse of scripture, and I'm going to probably come right back to it uh, in, in a minute, but this is the reason why, uh, there's a reason behind all this. But the Bible says, it is in Proverbs chapter 25, verse number two, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. But the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Now, we could break that down and preach a while there, and, and I'm not going to do that. But I, I'm not uh, not to take anything out of context, not to uh, take away from the Scripture. But there is a principal thing here uh, that has really just been dealing, God's been dealing with my heart about it. And I want to I want to share that. Just I'm going to try to keep this video going this time. Um, if I lose my emotion, I apologize in advance. It, it, I'm very emotional today. Uh, it's a very uh, it's a very difficult thing that we are in right now. But the first part of that verse says, It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. Um, I want to come back to that in a little bit, but I want that to be in your mind as I go into these details. Let me just kind of give you a brief update. Uh, I'm going to take you back and bring you forward as fast as I can. Please bear with us. Be patient. Uh, this is for the benefit of everybody that is asking I feel like it's it's time. We didn't want to do this yet, um, but I didn't realize how fast the Lord would begin to move. And, and, and it's like a second wave of just God's people finding out about Hannah uh, through several meetings. There was a national meeting that was going on in Tennessee this week, and one of the men of God knows us. And I got pictures of all kinds of people praying underneath the tent. Um, he sent me a picture of all of that and said, Preacher, they're praying for Hannah. Uh, word's getting out. That wasn't intended ever, um, but let me back up and explain. I'm going to give you a timeline. It's important that we pay attention to these details. Number one timeline is that um, Hannah began uh, to be sick on June the uh, at camp last year. I'm looking for the dates in my calendar. Bear with me one second. I'm going to give you the dates. So last year, uh, June 14th, uh, was the first day of camp. Uh, that week, we were at camp, and Hannah was not well. She wasn't sick, but she wasn't well. Uh, she wasn't eating very well. She had some severe nosebleeds and some other things. Uh, and it began to digress from there. On the Monday the 21st, I had shoulder surgery. Um, came home. I was outpatient. I came home from surgery, and Hannah was sick. Uh, by that next weekend, she was in the hospital. 
Uh, and uh, this began the journey. She's been sick for almost a year now. We're a few weeks away from one year. Uh, Hannah began to get sick with all kind of bowel problems, intestinal problems. That's been the root uh, problem all along. Just to fill in a few gaps, uh, in 2019, when we moved out to Texas to start the church, wasn't there long. Hannah was rushed by ambulance to hospital. Uh, she had an obstruction in her bowels. They found out quickly. Now, this is prior to the sea monster, which is interesting, but I'm trying not to get into all of that. There's a lot of things I could tell you. Uh, but anyways, they, they got her in the hospital, found out that was a problem. It was no big deal. They, they put an NG tube in her nose, cleaned her out. A few days later, she was absolutely fine. Uh, back to normal, um, if you will, and went on living life. No problem. That was in 2019. Uh, this year, you know, in 2021, uh, she was sick. Well, this time, uh, was it was uh, sea monster has already been introduced, the whole nine yards. Amazing, the medical field changed for the worse. We went in uh, to the children's hospital, and she was very, very sick. I mean, this went on and on and on. They did some some testing. Um, they said, well, we don't think she's got a blockage. We don't think she's backed up, whatever. And we pushed for them to do a colonoscopy uh, because we felt like some of the symptoms that she had experienced in 2019 were identical. They refused to do that. They said, no, Hannah's making this up. It's all psychological, blah, blah, blah. They refused to do the testing. Um, we went through a nightmare with a doctor there. I will call him out. I will call out some doctor's names. Uh, they need to be held accountable. We are asking for the Lord to give us uh, good legal representation, not for money. That's not what we're about. But I want these men uh, and women to lose their licenses. They need to for the medical neglect and malpractice. Now, there's a whole big can of worms uh, that is involved here. Give me one. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to type something real quick because I'm trying to pull up information. Uh, Um, so, sorry about that. Uh, again, I'm trying to, we might cut that out, but we'll see. Um, long story short, they, uh, they refused to do so. They, they bullied us around. We, we ended up having to leave the hospital, uh, after a week with no answers, no help. Hannah began to decline at that point. Um, so we went through the process and we had to, uh, now we don't have great insurance at all by any means. Um, I don't want to get into all that, but. Some things are covered, a lot of things are not. It's, it's been a battle. Long story short, we stepped outside. We had no choice. We had to step outside uh, and just go out of pocket at that point. We found us a, uh, a, it took a long time. It took like a week, but I mean a lot of phone calls. It was around the clock. Found a GI that was an adult GI, didn't typically see pediatrics, willingly saw Hannah, agreed to do the colonoscopy. Within just a few days, they did a colonoscopy, couldn't even complete it, uh, and found out she had a major blockage so what we suspected all along. That has been the root of all the problems, all right? So I'm not gonna get into every single detail, but somewhere that was in June, August, whatever, we went through several bad doctors, lots of nightmares type things. Um, and finally, in August, we got hooked up with the GI that we're still under his care now. He's a great GI doctor. We, got, we see a GI doctor, we see a neurologist, we see a, um, we see an oncologist, a hematologist, we, we have a PCP, and also we have a urologist uh, and, uh, and a hematologist and an oncologist. I don't know if I said that. Anyway, so there's a lot involved here. Um, long story short, in uh, middle of December, we, you know, we got a lot of counsel. We took some, left some. We had to chew through that. Went to a chiropractor and began that uh, Godly man has great representation across this state and across the country. Just a highly, highly recommended man. Uh, says he's a believer, whatnot. Got no ill will against him. Uh, but uh, they did five adjustments. And then on the sixth adjustment, I believe that's right. We've got all this documented. I'm just trying to give you a rundown really fast. Uh, we, did a, we did another adjustment on, uh, on Friday, December the 10th. And it was the first time that Hannah had an adjustment that was done by another... Um, by one of the other doctors in the office because uh, our particular doctor was not there that day. He doesn't come in that office on Fridays and he, he was totally confident, said you'll have no problems. Uh, uh, so so that is a, uh, I apologize, I, I've got so much going on here. Um, that is a, uh, whatever. 
So Friday, they did the, the other doctor did the adjustment that day. When we left, Hannah began to cry in pain. She said, my neck hurts like she never had that problem before. She was in a great deal of pain in her neck. Uh, that afternoon, a couple hours later, she began to sneeze. Some of you have seen the video of her sneezing. That was December the 10th. She began to sneeze every three to five seconds. That went on for five months, a uh, long, long time. And in the process of that, we never could get help. We got doctors from all over America. People saw that about 8,700 people, maybe 9,000 now. I don't really know. Uh, have seen the video of Hannah sneezing and so on and so forth. We, we were desperate for answers. We got doctors from all over the country, 10 or 12 doctors we were talking to. Nobody could figure it out, and they never did. And so about four weeks ago, they put Hannah in the hospital to do a test uh, on her digestive system and all of that. Just we're still not getting answers. And they put an NG tube in, and it stopped the sneezing. So praise God, she's not sneezing anymore. And I said throughout time, uh, if you ever watched our videos, that the sneezing was only that which was being manifested the most. It wasn't the, the core problem. And so we've gotten past that, uh, but there's a whole, there continues to be a, a slew of problems. Um, and we are just walking through this nightmare. Uh, we, we, we are still, we did, we've done every test under the sun. Uh, we just got through with a bone marrow test. Um, the bone marrow test, part of it came back and uh, the rest of it did not. We're still waiting on the genetic side of things. And so I want you to understand that that could come back. Um, there's some patterns in her blood that would show a type of cancer. I'm not saying she has it. We don't know. Uh, we're, getting, we're getting to the point we really need answers really bad, like yesterday. Uh, Y'all know what I mean by that. Long story short, um, we are now at the point, if we can't get the help and answers we need, the Mayo Clinic is next. We do actually have an appointment with them in July. That's how far out they are. It's a long process, expensive process. And whatever, we'll get into that at another time. So I want to tell you just kind of what happened here. Um, on Wednesday night, Hannah, um, we had just laid down for bed. And probably 10, 15 minutes later, uh, Cassidy and Hannah shared a room. Cassidy was screaming to the top of her lungs. Uh, we ran in there. Uh, Hannah is covered head to toe in feces. Uh, she began to vomit her feces. It's called fecal vomiting. And you can do your own research on that. It's very life-threatening, very serious. Uh, my wife tried to console her, and we got a hold of the, the on-call uh, GI and told them the situation. Uh, there are, our, our GI is in Fort Worth. That's an hour and a half away from here. He said, we don't have an hour and a half to spare. Her life is on the line. Call an ambulance. We got an ambulance here. They rushed her to the hospital immediately. They had to get her stabilized in the bedroom. Uh, had to start an IV. They pumped her full of Zofran uh, to suppress that and Phenigran. And they got her to the hospital, and they were not concerned at all. And they questioned uh, my wife as to whether or not um, uh, it, it, it was legitimate. And I mean, this the stupid, uh, this <laughs> the stupidness of of it uh, of our medical field. And I'm trying to to juggle several things here. But in the process of all that, um, Hannah. It was just awful. I mean, it was just awful. Um, they, they wanted to know, how do you know it was feces, all this and that. We were here. We know what happened. The, the paramedics were messed up. One of the EMS guys was so messed up, he couldn't even go in there, in the room. Uh, they see a lot of things. So that's how bad it was. I've uh, never, ever uh, seen anything, um, anything like it. Never smelt anything like it uh, or anything like that at all. And so we, uh, we dealt with it, whatever. Got to the hospital. Um, they act like they didn't even know she came on an ambulance. They did uh, a, a CT scan and uh, they said, oh, everything's fine. She's okay. We gave her a bag of fluid, sent her home. That kind of deal. Um, and so, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, in that, they sent her home at 4 o'clock in the morning, my wife called. I left them go. I didn't know how long or what hospital. I thought we might transfer. We were trying to get her transferred to, to, uh, to, uh, to Fort Worth. That did not happen. And so in the midst of that, uh, they dis discharged her at 4 a.m. on Thursday morning. Give me just a moment. I'm going to have to take this phone call, and I will come right back. I apologize about that. We'll Hopefully we'll get these clips together. Um, that was a very important phone call, and I'm going to go into that in a minute. Uh, the things have just continued to deteriorate. Um, so anyways, they discharged her at 4 a.m. Uh, on Thursday. Uh, it, 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 we got in bed about 5 by the time I got them back here. 
Um, got in bed about 5 a.m. Of course, Hannah needed to be bathed and clean. Um, she has just deteriorated to the point she sleeps like pretty much around the clock. Um, she's in and out of consciousness uh, all day throughout the day. Uh, she sits in a wheelchair uh, at church, and of course, if we if we can't leave her alone, we have to go in public, um, which we try not to do. We had a couple times last week because we had a revival. We just wanted her to be out. We can't leave her alone, and so we went out to eat with a preacher and his family. That's the first time we've ever done that uh, since she's been sick, and she sat in a wheelchair, and she tried to stay awake and talk to the girls, that kind of deal. Um, by the time midday Thursday came, we got in bed at 5 a.m., uh, and by 7, our phones were blowing up. Doctors were calling. All kind of stuff's going on. This is a whirlwind right now. They um, they got Hannah. Finally, her GI said, I want her to the hospital, Cook Children's Hospital of Fort Worth. Uh, get her in there. And then, uh, so we did. That was a whole other nightmare in itself. We did get them down there. Um, I dropped them off at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and left them there. We thought they'd surely be staying. And they are there. So thankfully for that. But the ER experience was a nightmare. Uh, they they sat in the waiting room for four and a half hours. Finally, they got them an ER room uh, and did not see a doctor till the middle of the night. Finally, after several hours, that doctor didn't know what to do. Turned it over to the lead doctor. Here's the answer to prayer, which was the doctor we prayed would be there. The doctor is awesome. She has uh, treated Hannah twice in that hospital, and so they admitted Hannah, and so on and so forth. Hannah, they are very concerned that she may be uh, she may be septic. Uh, they've got her stabilized. They, there's a lot going on right now. In fact, I just got the, one of the worst phone calls I've gotten yet. I'm going to try to get into this. Um, several things. One thing they did discover at the hospital on, uh, on Wednesday was that she has a large ovarian cyst. Uh, that's never been an issue or discovered, so that's a whole other can of worms now. So we know this through the process of time. She has been diagnosed with a form of gastroparesis. She has now a large ovarian cyst. She now has been uh, has experienced what they call fecal vomiting. Uh, it's the awfulest thing. And her, her blood pressure dropped, and I'm going to try to get that exact number, uh, what that was. She is very lethargic. Sorry about all that. I'm, I'm getting a lot of stuff coming at me left and right while I'm trying to do this. Well, I've tried to do this several times, so I'm just going to push on and we'll edit it, whatever we have to do. Um, I, I don't really, I mean, there's a reason why I have the time to do this right now, and I'll explain that in a minute. So, uh, and her blood pressure has continued to drop steadily, um, and, and uh, I'm going to get the number, I don't want to misquote what the actual lowest one uh, has been so far. And uh, a lot of these doctors between two hospitals are not showing great concern uh, for some of these things. Um, now there was an MRI ordered uh, that was supposed to be with contrast uh, for the purpose of seeing everything as well as that ovarian cyst. Well, the doctor put the order in, and last night when the doctor was gone and her shift was over, uh, this is the generalist, the hospitalist, um, the, the radiology department argued against it and refused to do the MRI, and they ended up doing an ultrasound this morning, or last night rather, uh, which is not near as effective, and the reason they're claiming is it was not an emergency situation. They're saying that there's a national shortage of contrast, and therefore they will not do MRIs with contrast, and that is an emergency. We've been screaming up and down. Our daughter is about to die. She's, she, she didn't have an hour and a half to make it to Fort Worth. Uh, they flushed her full of of, of drugs that suppress that, which is fenugreek and zofran, that's a nausea medicine, kept her from doing it again. Um, just a lot of things, okay? And so we're dealing with that. Nonetheless, they are listening. It's just a battle. We're fighting a battle of our lives right now. Uh, so Hannah's very, very sick. She's very, very weak. Um, and so she's got all these things going on and uh, in, in the midst of just a craziness. It's like Everything, we feel like, okay, we're going the next step, and everything just kind of went haywire, and it has gone haywire. And the last 24, the last four days have just been a blur. We, my wife and I, both of us, we've probably gotten less than four hours of sleep in a three-day period or, or, or more, and uh, that's fine. God knows, uh, but it's what it is. It's, an, it's a it, Friday or Thursday when I took him to the hospital. My son rode with me. It was about a uh, about a four and a half hour one way uh, you know round trip because of traffic. It was just that time of day, uh, and then Memorial Weekend coming up. Just a lot going on. So all of that's going on. Blood pressure down. Uh, they did put an NG tube. They cleaned her out. They're leaving it in. 
And because now, you know, Hannah has not eaten food uh, for almost a year. She's had one or two occasions for testing where they made her and it was the worst thing I ever watched. I mean, the pain was just unreal. Um, and so they're probably about to put nutrients into that. Uh, and there's a lot of things that are concerned. She's lost about 85 pounds since August. Uh, she's very frail, very weak. And uh, she's had bleeding out of the eye, bleeding out of the ear. At times, just a lot going on. There's a great, there's a certain pattern in some of her blood that we've seen, uh, enlarged spleen, certain things. The one thing the bone marrow has shown is uh, enlarged red blood cells. And so we're hoping and praying those genetics will point to more specifics so we don't have to go to the Mayo Clinic uh, because it's just a nightmare trying to think about. But uh, nonetheless, there, there's some good evidence for a, a cancer in her blood. Uh, we just got to nail that down. We cannot treat it. And so long story short, that's where we're at. Now, let, let me, uh, I, I'm waiting to find out uh, what that low blood pressure was. And I will tell you that. I believe it was, I want to say it was like, I want to say it was like 80 over 40. Or, it was so low. I mean, it was crazy what it was. My wife will tell me here in a minute and I'll pass that on. Uh, but let me just tell you the phone call I just received. The, the doctor just came in and kind of told us the plan. Uh, I am not at the hospital, as you can see. Uh, there's a reason for that. Um, I'm overwhelmed. I need you to pray. All right. So one thing that they are highly concerned about that we, the, the hospitalist, normally I would be there. I've been running back and forth until today. Um, today is a hard day uh, and there's a lot of reasons i'm gonna tell you why but uh what has happened they came in and sat down with my wife and i would have been there um my wife didn't know that was going to be and they won't let you record it's just it's nuts uh they are highly concerned that hannah may be in the in it's worse than being septic it's that they, they, they think she's not septic but what's worse than that they think she is and it's called and some of y'all are familiar with this it's called refeeding syndrome. Refeeding syndrome. And what happens is when your body does not eat for so long, it begins to eat itself from the inside out. They think that's what's happening with Hannah, and it's deadly. It's, it's, I mean, she just point blank told my wife to her face uh, without beating around the bush. She said it's deadly. It's lethal. Um, she won't live. We, we, we just, we got to, so there's a lot they have to do to find out if that's going on. I feel like she's in good hands, but at the same time, I don't. And, uh, I don't know what's fixing to happen. We just don't know. We just need you to keep praying and, and, and uh, sharing this and praying. And uh, God only knows what's going to happen. Um, on top of all these things, the reason that I'm here uh, is this morning, our youngest daughter, Cassidy, she's six. She's very, very sick. Um, and just, you know, what? it's nothing alarming like, oh, no, but it's just, uh, bad timing, bad timing, and uh, she's got a, I think she's got an ear infection, she's been running a fever, um, she doesn't have COVID or nothing like that, or C, the C virus or whatever, I don't believe that at all, she hasn't been around nobody, but uh, she just got, she got, uh, an, I think an ear infection, like a, just a cold, a common cold, and uh, not running high fever, but just had a little fever, vomited a little bit, and uh, she said she, she's, you know, she's sick, she bounces back real quick, but she came just bawling her eyes out. And I said, what is the matter, baby? And she said, it's your birthday and I'm sick. That's awful. I said, don't worry about that. And uh, it's already bad. Mom and Hannah's not here. And everybody's just, everybody's wore out. And we need the help of the Lord. I would never in a million years thought I'd be doing something like this, but it's the fastest way I can get the most information out there. Um, we just, we just need y'all. I know y'all are praying. Uh, a lot of people don't even know. They're finding out. I want you to know as much as you can know. And believe me, there's a million things you won't know because I can't share it all. But this is one thing. I, I, and so several things. People have asked, how do we help y'all? What can we do? Um, number one, nobody needs to come here because that's not going to help. I'm the kind of, it just you just need to understand. I, uh, I, I, I'm one that it is in my nature to be a, a doer, a giver, a uh, giver full of hospitality and when somebody comes it's just my nature we're gonna it puts more pressure on us not that they are doing that but our desire is to be a host and a blessing and when we can't do that that puts pressure it's unnecessary I, i'm being honest we don't need that pressure right now uh there's, so there's nothing that anybody could do if they were here 
So I say that in love. We would just, that's not the answer. That won't help. It, would be, it would just won't be a help. Um, you know, at this point, I'm not saying it won't be at some time, but right now, that's not the answer. Uh, but, but I will say this, as far as that goes, that's the only thing I know we don't need. Um, a lot of people said, what do you need? How can we help? Uh, I had one man a couple days ago, he sent me a few dollars and said, uh, you know, this will feed your family today so that you don't have to, uh, to worry about that. And I said, bro, don't do that. And he did it anyway. And we praise the Lord for it. Uh, and guess what? We did. We, we ate out a few times that not going and sitting in a restaurant, but grabbing food here and there, running back and forth to the hospital, trying to feed the other three. Uh, but what, what I'm going to say is this, the people that keep asking, if you want to help us, the best thing you can do is this. Number one, if you are a believer and you're saved by the grace of God and you are right with God, if you're not right with God, get right with God so that you can pray and have your prayers answered. But pray, uh, pray like never before. The, this is the final place where we can get all the help. At, pray that God won't take our baby from us. We don't know what God's will is, but I'm begging him for mercy on that. Uh, pray they'll help her and that they'll listen. We're having to talk to all kinds of people, uh, senators, lawyers. I, we need legal help because we've, we're fighting against a medical system. It's a huge machine, and you're not going to win without the right representation. Uh, and I, again, we're not after money. We're, we're trying to hold some people accountable so we can get help, not only for our daughter, but for many others that have gone through this and that will have to go through this. Um, I, I will say there's, if you're in the Dallas area, you need to stay away from the DHAT team at Children's Medical, uh, particularly Dr. Kendall O'Brown. If you're uh, in the Dallas area, you need to stay away from Cook Children's Neurology, particularly uh, Dr. Let's see, her name, uh, where'd it go? I lost her name. Let's see. Dr. Uh, Brittany Pryor Craig. Uh, she's a devil. And uh, these doctors have tried to say this is all in Hannah's head, especially when she was sneezing. They've said she needs behavioral therapy. She needs ADHD therapy, blah, blah, blah. Isn't it amazing? They said all that, that they put a tube in her nose. She never sneezed again. That was not made up. So anyways, there's a lot of people that need to be held accountable. Uh, we just need a lot of prayer on all of that. Um, and, and if you if you just know God wants you to, you know, what I tell people, if you don't know what to do and you're one of those that's asking, how can we help? How can we help? Listen, number one, pray. Number two, while you're praying, ask the Lord what he would have you to do. How can you help? If God touches your heart and says, hey, you know, buy him a meal or whatever. I'm just throwing that out there. If God helps, you know, then just obey the Lord. And uh, we've got a P.O. box. We I don't know how much confidence I have in him, but we also have a PayPal account. If somebody wants to do something immediately, there's always, look, you're not going to, we're, we're, there's, I could give you a million things we could put it to use for. That's not what I'm all about. That's not what this is about. I'm just trying to give y'all an update on what's going on, how you can pray, and kind of know a little bit about more specifically what's going on. The last video I put up was of the ambulances and all of that. And the reason I did that is I didn't know what to do. They're taking it away. I'm like, man, I don't have time to call nobody. I don't have time to text nobody. And uh, it took 60 seconds. I, I mean, I had it up that quick, and, and y'all found out, and people were able to pray. That's why we did it. And, uh, and I believe it's because some of those prayers that Hannah's still with us, uh, they told us her, these EMS people were here. They said her life is in danger. I mean, it, it, it's, I won't even get into the gory details of how awful it has been. And, uh, and now Hannah's, uh, Cassidy's sick, and so tomorrow we'll have church, and uh, Cassidy will stay here with Mackenzie. And me and Chris will go to church without the other two. Uh, and so we're divided in threes. And, uh, you know, we got three companies of two. And that's not at all how this family operates. And it's just, uh, I, if I can be honest and transparent with you, it is a nightmare that won't end. Now, let me say this. We love the Lord. We believe the Lord. We trust the Lord. We are begging him. And if it was not for God and his grace and the prayer of his people, we would not still be going on. I promise you, I've studied, I'm going to preach the word of God tomorrow by the grace of God and try to help people's lives. That's what we do. But uh, while I'm trying to help people, I'm, I'm also trying to hold it all together for my family. And so I'm talking about we need a lot of prayer, a lot of grace. And uh, one thing I will say, again, I want to go back to this and finish this out because I don't know who's even going to take the time to watch this. But if we can get it out there, I think it'll be a help. It'll help you understand how serious things are. I never did it. My wife must be occupied with another doctor. They're in and out. I, I'm trying to get up there. I'm trying to get Hannah 
uh, just go see them for a minute. They want me to come up there and see her. Um, and she wants to see me because uh, it's my birthday, and I, that don't matter to me. When they get home, we'll celebrate. If they want to celebrate, we'll do that when they get home. But uh, right now, all I care about is, is, is getting my family back together uh, and getting Cassidy well. And, uh, I, you know, she's already starting to feel a little better, but she's just, it's just, it's just, a, it's a lot. Um, you know, my six-year-old's crying in my arms. Uh, Daddy, it's your birthday and I'm sick. No, don't worry about that. It's just the kind of people God's allowed us to raise in our home. They're, they're always thinking about others. And uh, Hannah's in the hospital and she said, Daddy, I'm sorry I'm here. I mean, listen, that doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just telling you that I'm blessed with a good family. And we need a lot of prayer, but I want to go back to this again. In, in, in Proverbs 25, chapter number 25, verse number 2, the first part of that verse says, It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. I don't like that. You don't like that. Let's just be honest. Our flesh does not like that. In my flesh dwelt no good thing. But God is not primarily concerned with my comfort. Because I am uncomfortable. Been uncomfortable for a while. We are out of our comfort. My wife said the other day, driving on the road, she goes, boy, life was easy when we were comfortable. And she's right. It was a lot easier. But he said, in the word of God, he, there's a principle. God is not concerned primarily with your comfort and my comfort, but he is primarily concerned that he gets glory. He is concerned about his glory. And I'll tell you, this trial that we are in, it's not over. One day it will come to pass, whether through the grave or through the sky or through healing of its own. God's going to do what God's going to do. We're begging for mercy. We're begging and pleading for help. We, we just were overwhelmed. But let me say this. It will come to pass eventually. But the bottom line is no matter what, however long it goes, whatever we do, whatever we don't do, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. Now, we could preach for a while on that principle, that thought, but here's the bottom line. This whole thing for a whole year, much of it has been concealed from our eyes. Much of it has been concealed from the doctor's eyes. Much of it has been concealed from your eyes. And in that process of doing that, it causes you to truly, it stretches your faith. Some of you don't even have faith. It'll give you faith. Why? Because faith is the evidence of things not seen. It, it, you can't see it. And it is, it's what brings glory to God. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. And so it all has to do with faith because it's the glory of God to conceal it. And when things are concealed from us, whatever it is. Now, of course, there's context. The heaven for height, the earth for depth, the heart of, you know, all of these things are things that God conceals. But even, even on a practical level, that principle is sometimes in trials it's concealed. And Job didn't know. He, in 23 of chapter 23 of Job, he said, I've looked ahead, looked behind, looked on each side. God's concealing it, amen. But what he came to realize was, when I don't know where he's at, he knows the way that I take. And though God may be concealing all of this from us, he knows exactly what he's going to do, and we're trying to hold on to that. And so I just found encouragement in that today, just begging God for help and uh, trying to hold it together. I'm an emotional wreck. I mean, I'm crying one minute and praising God the next and praising God and crying at the same time and singing and trying to hold it together for my family. And uh, that's, what a, that's, what a, that's what a child of God does, amen. Faith that cannot be tested is faith that cannot be trusted. Do you know how long I've preached that? And this is not the first time I've been in a, a valley, a trial, or anything like that. But it is just the one that we're in. And, and it's, it's been a long one. And we're tired. Uh, but uh, keep praying. And uh, I hope this is helpful. You can, you can send me a message. You can private message me. You can email me. You can send me a, a, a letter. Whatever. If you want to talk, you want to talk about it. You will need more details. Whatever. That's about as much as I can give you in a short amount of time. I'm sorry for the length of the video. I really hope this will answer your questions. I hope this will help. And I hope more than anything, this will get some people, maybe some new, what I'm learning in the last 24 to 48 hours is there's a lot of new people praying that didn't even know. And that's, that's not my business. That's God's business. But he's doing what he wants to do. He is doing a work and he's using a whole lot of people. Hey Amen. He's, he's really, he's using my 14 year old, precious 14 year old daughter in her life to bring a whole lot of people all over the place to one central point of prayer on one behalf. And yet through that, God is getting glory to himself uh, because we're all, it's been concealed from all of us. We don't know. We don't know the answer. We don't know what's going to happen. None of us do. But, uh, but I do know this. What I don't know is a lot.
But what I do know is that God's getting glory by us not knowing. And now we're asking if it's, you know, in his time, in due time. Humble yourself there from the mighty hand uh, of God and he will exalt you in, in due time. When's due time? Whenever it's due, I don't know. I'm begging God for mercy. We're begging God for help. We need, a, we're just, I can't even begin to explain to you how stretched out we are uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, all the above. Every area of your life that can be affected by something has been affected. Uh, I want to praise the Lord that nobody's, uh, n nobody's, uh, nobody's quit on God, nobody's depressed, uh, nobody's discouraged, nobody's defeated. But we're just pressing on and trying to bring glory to God through what is and has been the longest year of our entire lives. And I pray that you will just continue to pray and help us. Now, here's the blood pressure. My wife just texted it to me. The lowest blood pressure that Hannah's been having is 84 over 48. 84 over 48. Uh, and some of y'all know a lot about that. You know how serious that is. So uh, please pray that they'll listen to us, that they will keep her there and get her fixed as long as necessary. It'd be a lot better if we could get to the bottom of this and get her some help rather than having to get discharged, come home, suffer for the next two months, and then go to Mayo Clinic and kind of semi-start the process all over. We love you. Thank God for you. Uh, they're doing an EKG on Hannah right now. They're concerned about her heart rate. By the way, her heart rate's been up there in the 140s, uh, even resting heart rate, and they, they paid no attention to that. We've screamed and said, hey, there's a problem here. Well, now all of these things that we are thinking are very frightful, they have become frightful because they are highly concerned that now Hannah has refeeding syndrome. And it is deadly, and we're just begging God not to take her. But I will assure you, Hannah's a saved, born again. We've had conversations. Hannah, are you ready to die? Uh, uh, well, actually, what the conversation has been, she said, what if I go home to be with the Lord? She's even mentioned lately, uh, I, I'm about to go home to be with the Lord. And we said, Hannah, don't say that. We don't know. And then I've asked her, well, are you ready to die? I mean, if that happens, are you? She said, Daddy, I'm saved, and I know that I'm going to heaven, and everything's going to be just fine. I'm not afraid of that. I just fear the heartache left behind. That's what she said. And uh, again, people going through things and they're concerned about other people. Uh, I think that should be uh, a normal quality, a normal character trait of every born again believer. And uh, the way that you have true joy and what I've tried to drill into my family is, is you put Jesus first and then others and then yourself. And that, what is that joy? J-O-Y. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have got their opinion. They don't like how I'm handling all this. Uh, listen, I'm a Baptist, and, and one of the Baptist distinctives is in, in that letter I, it stands for individual soul liberty. And that means that we are possessed with the Holy Ghost of God upon salvation, and therefore the Holy Ghost of God guides us, every individual, on how to walk with God and how to navigate and narrate through things, but it will never be contrary to his word. And so there's a balance. Some people will say, well, that's a license to sin. No, it's not. Individual soul liberty has everything to do with being submitted to the Holy Spirit of God's leading and everything that he leads us to do, the way you can balance it out, if you will, or verify that it is the Spirit of God leading. He said, try the Spirit and see if they be of God is through his word because he will never he will never contradict his word. And so keep all that in mind uh, as you serve the Lord today. Happy Memorial Weekend to everybody. Hope you all have a great weekend. And I don't know when we'll get back on here. I don't know. what Everything's just by minute by minute right now. Um, it's crucial, it's vital, and we need a lot of prayer. And uh, I'm not real good at holding things back, but I'm going to tell you, my heart is broken more than I can ever express. We love you. Thank God for you. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I hope this will be a help. Please uh, share this video, like it, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Help us keep the word going. Uh, this is what's going on, and let everybody know. And uh, share this link, it'll be fine. And again, happy Memorial Day. Love y'all. Memorial weekend. It's Saturday sometime. I don't know. I've been trying to do this all morning long. And it's just been an eventful morning. Had to leave and go get some stuff for, for Cassidy. I think we got her on the men, but now we just got to watch her and, uh, you know, keep her comfortable. And uh, she's not vomiting anymore. Praise the Lord. But uh, just, just pray. All right. Love y'all. God bless you. And uh, don't forget, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing.